my chest. Looks around, pecked. My chest. And looks around again, and jumped onto the fence. Looks around, started pecking the fence. And went right back down again and jumped into the swing seat. And started splashing again. I said, look at this bird. He has a better time than most humans do. He is enjoying himself. So we're so stressed. I look at the bird. You don't tell that we're not more important than this bird. This bird's going to be dead in a, in a few months' time. And we're not more important than this bird. You know, sometimes God shows you things, shows you nature. Just so that you can, you, you, you can picture what is going on here. And he says, look, which of you by taking four? Uh, well, first of all, yeah, your heavenly father feed of them. Are he not much better than they? Which of you by taking four can add one cubit onto his stature? Have you ever fought something to come? And it changes your matter. Change has come because I think. Have you seen those programs where they try to think it and it comes? Yeah, they're encouraging you to take faults. I showed you this slide the other day about the NHS encouraging you to take faults. Think. In fact, get engrossed in your fault of the moment and feel what's going on in you. Tap into yourself. New angels. Which of you? So I take four. Um, and why take you four for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow. They toil not. How do they spin? And yet I say unto you that, every, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? What's the enemy doing to you? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what we more shall we be clothed? Something's happening here. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Your heavenly Father knoweth. Here's the answer. What should you do instead? Help me. Verse 34. Verse 33, sorry. But seek ye first, second, third, first. The what? The kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these things shall be added on to you. Last verse. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. Do not meddle with tomorrow. Don't meddle with tomorrow. Please listen carefully. You're about to find out why we are so stressed. You're about to find out why so much sickness and illness comes upon us. You're about to find out why so many people are mentally ill. This is it. Therefore, take no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Listen to that carefully. Why are you intermeddle with the faults of the moral? Does it belong to you? Why have you decided to invoke tomorrow, today? Why have you decided that you have prophetic gifts to change what's going to happen tomorrow? or to make your own tomorrow. You know, people who are very stressed are the most creative people. They, they, they somehow can construct a problem that does not exist. 
they somehow in, in their imagination can create a problem. It's not there yet. It's not even there. But somehow they create that problem and it's there. Listen to the words that are being said here very carefully. You're going to bring future problems of tomorrow to the present. How? By taking thought. The more you think about something, the more you are invoking tomorrow. It says, for the morrow, watch how the morrow is personified, shall take thought for the things of itself. One thing that's guaranteed is that tomorrow problems will come. Give me a healthy amen. amen. Tomorrow, you see, the steadfast love that we sing of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithful. I love it, it's new. Every morning, these are troubles. They will come. Yes. It is guaranteed with a stamp. Amen. Jesus said, "In the world you shall have tribulation, but what should you do? Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world." Amen. Now that's a principle. Tomorrow, what's the time now? It's 8.25. Well, 8.20 or something. 12 a.m., some of you are going to go and see if your money's arrived. <laughs> or 12.30. Or 12.30, you're going to you're gonna check. And if your money's not there, woo! <laughs> Someone's gonna get it today. And which bill are come on? <laughs> I'm not I'm, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> and, and, and then and then you wake up in the morning oh, and then a letter is on the floor. Boom, 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 boom. You don't pick up the letter. It looks red. Mm -hmm. Some people don't open their letters, you know. Sad. <laughs> You give yourself more stress. Yeah. It's a red letter. Your, your gas bill is due. You've got to pay 900 and something. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you use it. You use it. Only you use it. But yet you're finding someone to blame. This is a contract you have. You wake up. You go to work. Your boss says, we're having to make people redundant. And um, we're going to select some people who are going to have to leave. The next day hasn't come yet. You don't know nothing. It's but you've created the problem. No, it's me. What's he going to say? Well, I guess. <laughs> Maybe they won't look at me favorably. <laughs> we, 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 we're constructing it. Mm. You don't even know. Mm. Or, you know, the boss can say, we're keeping you. You come to church on Sunday. The she said, he said, has gone to the next level. Now she say, he said more than she said. There's a new problem. <sighs> it don't matter what you think and what you say. Tomorrow is going to come with its own problems. Thank God it doesn't end there. But I want you to be sure about it. Now, next thing that is said is worthy of taking note of. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. There's enough 
evil for the day. Do you know why people get stressed? Because God only supplies strength for the problems that you're going through today. Not tomorrow, but today. So if you decide that you want to go and invoke tomorrow's problem, God has no supply. I love it when he says, there's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. So when you find that people are tempted, it's because they don't know the faithfulness of God. Now, when you look at Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 to 23, it says, It is the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because, there's a cause of it. Because, there's a cause of it. His compassions, his compassions, fail not. And it says, they are new every morning. You get a, you get a, a fresh supply of mercies for the day. He will not give you tomorrow's. If you take, if you if you want to think about yesterday and you want to think about tomorrow as well as today, you're in trouble. What he did to me yesterday, see what God says to give. Well, the way he looked at me yesterday and what he said yesterday and how he said it and how he looked, his eyes got bigger. You know what happened yesterday, but I'm where I need to think about it. God doesn't supply for that. There's no supply. So you're going to have to go for a little time of stress until we get it. What are you going to say about me what if, you know, what if the message stick to today's problems yeah, and trust God for today? God don't want you to move any quicker than you really can. Because that's the problem we had at the beginning. We, we became independent. But God wants us to depend on him. If you look at Luke, someone find Luke 21, 12 to 19. Luke 21, 12 to to 19. Amen. You got it? Amen. All right. So, if you trust God, you will never get tomorrow's problems affecting you today. If you trust God, you won't let yesterday's problems trouble you today. Why people are stressed out is because they don't trust God. It's a trust issue. They don't trust God. Because if they trust in God, They'll be able to get through the day stress free. Yes. Yes. Stress. Who wants to be stress free? Yes. You know that anxiety, being careful, is a sin. That's why God says, be anxious or be careful for nothing. Something? God wants to be your sole provider. He wants you to trust him that as he feeds the birds, as he, as he takes care of the grass, he's going to take care of you. He's your heavenly father. Trust him. Otherwise, he's stressful. It's a trust problem. We don't trust God. As I was saying yesterday, uh, Song of Solomon, I said, when the word of God goes out, you've got to learn to, to, to extract the value in it. I go, oh, what's the Lord saying here? How do you hear the Lord is going gonna, gonna to keep you like eagle's wings? is going to cause you to, you know, to, to, to be balanced and well kept and 
you'll be your refuge, your sword. You know how many things are happening in your life every day you don't even know that God's into me? Yes. We don't see it because we're too busy seeing what's outside. Yeah. I want you to think you're here today because God's hand, even though you are stressed, but God's hand has been upon you. He is faithful. He'll provide you with a new supply in the morning. So don't think about tomorrow's bill today. Let the bill fall. And when the bill falls, God will give you a new strength to bear it. God will supply today. What happened yesterday? If you think about yesterday, you're in a deficit. Huh? Anxiety, deficit, disorder, bad disorder. Yeah. People are behind. Will I get it or I'll get it? What if I don't get it? What are you doing to yourself? Why don't you say, Lord, there's something going on today. I commend it. Commit it into thy hands. It is thine. Cast thee thy care unto him. For he cares for you. There's a roaring lion around. Please, um, Brother Jesus, go for it. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you mm. and persecute you delivering you up to the synagogues mm. and into prisons, being brought yeah. before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. It's going to turn. Settle it therefore in your heart. Settle it in your heart. Not to meditate before what you shall answer. Oh, come on, stop thinking about me. You're saying, that's going to be what if? But, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom. I'm going to give you a mouth. I'm going to give you a mouth and wisdom. I'm going to give you a mouth. I'm going to give you wisdom. Go on. Which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain. That's when the devil can't do anything anymore. When you trust live God. Live God. God is working now. Huh. Weeping may endure. Or weeping endure for one night. But joy comes in the morning. My struggles yesterday shall remain yesterday. And I'm going to deal with today's one with the help of God. Sometimes we're still trying to mix them all up. Did you finish? No. Go on. Uh, nor resist. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and children. Yes. Kins, folks, and friends. Mm -hmm. and some of you shall be caused to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. Uh, uh, hold on a second. After all that, <laughs> there shall not a hair of your head perish. We gotta trust God. Amen. Amen. We got He's an on-time God. Amen. Yes, He is. Amen. Amen. Yes, he the is. Bible says, "My grace is sufficient." We can boldly come to the throne of grace where we can obtain mercy and find grace to help for tomorrow, for yesterday alone, in time of need. God is life. Amen. You will always remember how, from Sister Sanchez, how good God is. He won't let you forget how good He is. He is life. Just yesterday, I've forgotten God. Then we have serious, and that's why you don't remember God anymore because you're still looking at yesterday's problems. You get this? We're still looking at yesterday's problems. And then we're thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow. How many of us here already think about what's going to happen tomorrow? Yeah, amen. Oh, yes, that bill's coming. My <laughs> favorite bill. It's the big one coming. Like you know, Christ may come tonight. Yeah, yeah, he may come before we finish here today. Yeah. And you stress yourself for no reason. Yeah. That's true. And you know, tomorrow they might realize that they've made a mistake and give you that calculation before it was 900 and something pounds. They said, actually, sorry, it was 80 pounds. <laughs> I don't know how this happened, but I want you now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now you've got praise. <laughs> Listen, our God is always there. He will not leave us. 
nor forsake us. Sometimes we have to go through a little bit of a stress because we're losing sight of how valuable he is. Sometimes we have to go through a bit of stress. You know, you know what the word means? It means to strangulate. So you know when you worry, you're, you're, you're strangling yourself in your thoughts. You're strangling yourself. Worry is not in the Bible, but nonetheless, the word worry talks about choking. You're choking the word out of you. By thinking about tomorrow, the word gets choked. And then it's not, it's not real to you anymore. It's not valuable to you anymore because it's just been choked at the third ground. Even though we're all the fourth ground by God's grace, but we do experience a lot of grounds. Yeah, one of the things we experience is that when God gives us a word, there comes times in our lives to stress about that tomorrow, thinking about what's going to happen, da da da. You just can't see the word. You just look, you look the dull. Not bright. Also, the, the light of gospel, the gospel is just not shining bright in the thing. We don't realize that it's not the gospel's problem, it's our own problem. Amen. It's us who have refused to trust God. And we're going to show you what trust looks like, show you what faith looks like. I'll give you a sample of it and we'll finish now. I believe. Help my unbelief. We all say, I believe! <laughs> and we don't realize that there's some unbelief there. Yes. That cry was a holy cry because Christ helped him. The man no longer relies on just what he feels he has. Simon Peter loves thou me, thou lovest. Thou knowest. Don't trust yourself. Trust God. Amen. And let the word of God be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. The lamp can only shine bit by bit. And you can only see step by step. Not tomorrow. And as you keep progressing on that step, God beams the light ahead of you so that you can see your purpose. What? And your purpose will keep you, your focus keeps you. Those who lost purpose, who don't have got a vision, they fall into mental illnesses. Mm. And actually we're going to pick up on this and we're going to talk a little bit more about worry. I'll show you three scriptures that give it to us beautifully. That shows us that every time you're worried, what you know, you know, you don't cast your care to God, you're going to be drunk. If you're drunk, you know, people who are drunk don't see very clearly. When you're drunk, you can't see clearly. You can't see what God said. It always happens in those three scriptures 1 Peter 5, 7 to 8. Don't look at it yourself, but you can, you can pick it up yourself. 1 Peter 5, 7 to 8. Matthew 13, 22. Matthew 13, 22. And Luke chapter 21, 34 to 36. Luke 21, 34 to 36. Well, I see, this is a pattern. If you don't cast your care onto God, you're going to get drunk. And when you get drunk, that's why it's a big business, the alcohol and the, the tobacco and the drug business. <laughs> it's a very big business, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you're going to get drunk, but this time we're talking spiritually, but you can even see it in the physical, right? And when you're drunk, you're intoxicated, you can't see how bright God is. God bless you. Amen. Who would like to pray for us? How would you guys? that he goes through, Lord Jesus, and that Heavenly Father, God, that he will continue to put 
His trust in thee, Lord, and Lord. help us all, Lord, to trust thee more, Father Lord God, and indeed, Lord, help us to be honest with ourselves, Lord, Jesus. in those times where we know, Father Lord God, where there's unbelief, Lord, in times where we know we're not trusting in thee, Father Lord God, in times where we know, Father Lord God, that we're behaving in ways that is not, Father Lord God, even how thou desirest, Lord, Jesus. help us, Lord, even to know, Father Lord God, Jesus, the broken and the contrite spirit, Lord, that will not despise in the name of Jesus, that will be careful for nothing, Lord, but we will, Father, Lord God, even cast our care unto thee, Father, Lord God, yeah, Lord. thou carest for us, O oh Lord Jesus. We bless thy holy and mighty name, we thank thee, Lord, and indeed, Father, Lord God, we know, Father, Lord God, there's no strength in ourselves, Father, Lord God, there's no power of our own selves, no, Lord. Lord, but indeed, our power and our strength and our glory, glory and our might comes from thee, Father, Lord God, help us, Lord to continually be vigilant, to continually suspect ourselves, Lord, to continually, Lord, even declare as the disciples said, Lord, is it I, Lord? Mm. For indeed, Father, Lord God, thou lovest, Father, Lord God, those who are honest, Lord. Thou givest, Father, God, even more, Father, God, grace unto the humble, Lord. Yeah, Lord. The proud, Father, Lord God, Father, God, you, you know are far off in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, just have thy perfect way, Lord, even Lord. as we continue to pray, Lord. Help us, Lord, even to trust thee for everything of today, Lord. Mm. Let tomorrow take care of the things of itself, Lord God. Jesus. And let us truly live that word, Lord. Let us truly live day by day for thy return, mm. Father, God, any moment, Father, Lord God. Let us not lay up, Father, Lord God, treasures upon this earth, Lord God, Lord. in vain, Lord God. And to heaven and Father God derail us from the purpose that thou was ordained for us, Lord, to be shining as lights, Father God, into Jesus. this wicked and perverse generation, Lord. Mm. Lord, there's many people, Lord, that are gonna go to hell, Father God. And Lord, thou was even Father Lord God, given each Father God of us, Father God, a commission, Lord, even mm. to speak mm. unto that soul, whether it be for his judgment or his for his salvation, Lord. Yeah, Lord. So Lord, just have thy perfect way this day, Lord. Keep us, Lord, even as we go home today, Lord God. Lord, be there, Father God, driver of every vehicle and every transport mode, Lord, yeah, Lord. Until we meet again, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, as I was hearing that prayer, <laughs> Amen. Brother Jimmy said something very important there, and, you know, don't miss it. He said, There are many people going to hell. You know, these days, we are so bent on taking part of the scripture and leaving the other half. Okay, and we're, we're into promoting love, and we know that love is very important, please. But you know, part of promoting love is actually talking the truth. Yeah. All right, and you know, Jesus Christ himself said it. He used it to comfort and to warn a world that was degrading at the time, a society that was degrading, and he said, don't fear man who can only destroy the body, but fear God, who has the power to destroy both the body and the soul in hell. Okay? We, we, need, to, we need to be very balanced, if you want to call it, call it that. We need to be very balanced and we need to be very aware that in these days, when, when the doctrine of hell that is not spoken about anymore, we don't speak about hell anymore, lines start to go down here. If Jesus is going to speak about it, we also must speak about it as well in Jesus' name. So allow that to also stir in you and remind yourself that I'm not going to fear. Because if I fear, it means that I'm more concerned about my friends and my peers and all the others and so on. I'm not going to fear. I'm going to trust God because I know that God is greater and He is great indeed. His mercies are new every morning. Great is His faithfulness. God bless you all. Amen. Support the church with your tithes and your things and trust God with hallelujah your finances in middle times where um, Brexit, Brexit, whatever. People are stockpiling water at the moment, things are running out allegedly, and I think for true Christians, the test trusting God at this time in this dark and wicked world where they say, you know, we've lived in uncertainty, in anxiety, they said, for three years because of this Brexit madness. Uh, that's not our portion. <laughs> in Jesus' name, we continue to trust God. God bless you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.